So some people have been asking, why don't my step response traces look nice and smooth like this? So in this video, I'm going to go over some tips on how to get smooth and reliable step response traces so you can make an informed decision as to what the optimal PID settings should be. <laughs> Tip number one is you want to minimize the impact of feed forward for several reasons. Now this doesn't mean I'm suggesting not to use feed forward in your tune. All I'm saying is that to use the step response tool in PID toolbox, feed forward has to be taken out of the picture. So the easiest way to do this is to just drop the stick response gain as far as it'll go down and set feed forward transition to one. The first reason why this is important is because feed forward does some unusual things to the step trace algorithm. Another reason why you'd want to remove feed forward from the, from the equation here is because you want to optimize the PD gain and the, P, the PD balance. And so in order to do that, you really need to have feed forward out of the way or, or you don't know whether it's feed forward or P that's contributing to any overshoot that you might see. It's also important because feed forward is a kind of dynamic feature whereby the, the quicker you move the sticks, the more feed forward gets injected into the system. Uh, similarly, D min should be also turned off. Otherwise, D will be varying as a function of how large or small the moves are. And that's going to result in unreliable step traces from, from test to test. Now, to give you a better understanding of what the PID toolbox step response algorithm is actually doing, I've created this little simulation to give you a sense of what PID toolbox is actually doing with the data. The top panel here is plotting in red the set point, and then the black line represents the gyro. And these dashed vertical lines represent the region of data that PID Toolbox is currently working on. So what happens in PID Toolbox is this window moves along the data, collecting the data that's in it, and then computing a step response from that specific bit of data. And then after it's run through the entire log file, it then averages all of the extracted step response curves. So down here, what you're looking at is the computed step response curve for the data in that window. And over here, we're just going to show a zoomed in version of this as it moves in time. So if I just play this little simulation, you can see the window moving across the data. And as it's moving, we're plotting the step response curve here. And you can see the data zoomed in over here. So if I just stop at any point here, you can see that the step response curve nicely approximates what you see over here in the traces. So you see a small overshoot and a nice steady state. You can see that small overshoot represented in the traces as well. Now let's look at an example where feed forward is really high. So what I want you to take note of here is what happens with the waveform in this case. So you can see that very often there's a, a large offset. Also, there's a very exaggerated initial overshoot. So what's interesting is that this is not obvious in these in the actual traces themselves. And so without going into detail here, feed forward kind of messes with the algorithm and produces some results that don't really reflect reality. The second issue has to do with the way in which you move the copter around when doing this basement tuning approach. So this is an example of what I sometimes see, where there's very little movement along the axis itself. So the issue here is that there's large periods of time where, there's, where, the, where the movement is really small. And in those cases, oftentimes what happens is the step response traces look really noisy. This is especially the case if there is in fact quite a bit of noise in the trace itself. So the black here is the gyro as before. So I've zoomed in a bit just to show you the difference. So you can see, for example, that yaw is fairly clean here, but roll in particular has a bit of noise on it. This is not a dramatic amount of noise, but when you consider that the, the, the input moves themselves are really small, then the overall signal-to-noise ratio is much lower here than what you saw in the previous examples. So let's go back to our simulation now and look at that data. So you can see that the step response trace is pretty noisy in this case. You can also see that there's often this sort of offset issue that you sometimes see with feed forward as well. So what's the solution in this case? Well, there's two things you're going to want to do. First of all, this is usually a good indicator that you might want to revisit your filtering setup and see if you can clean up some of the gyro noise. But the second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get more consistent and slightly larger movements. 
to give an illustration of really how you want to be doing this basement tuning approach, this is a little video from Troy at Quad Standard Labs, who builds these Cinelifter rigs, who I've been working with and helping tune some of these rigs. And what you'll notice is that he's given it pretty, pretty strong inputs on, on both roll and pitch at the same time. So it's a kind of moving the pitch and roll stick around quite randomly, in fact. But the movements are quite large, a lot larger than a lot of people realize. Obviously, not everyone is going to be really good at this. It takes a little, it takes a little bit of skill, some line of sight skill. Um, but I can give you a couple of tips on how, to, how best to do this. One thing you can do that really helps is to create a line of sight rate profile that has a very, very low maximum rate, but a very strong center stick sensitivity. So in this case, for example, I'm using the actual rates with a center stick sensitivity at 200 and the max rate at 250. So what's good about this is when you move the stick around, it's going gonna, it's gonna to force some pretty big movements, but the copter will never really get out of control because you, you don't have a, a hot, really high maximum rate here. One of the mistakes a lot of people make here is they might have a thousand degrees per second or so and as a result is they end up pushing the stick a little too far and then the copter gets out of control as they get up to these really high rotation rates and so the safest way to get around that is to make sure that the maximum rate is set really low like about 250 or 300 but then have a nice strong center sensitivity even even perhaps linear is better uh, so that you just you just get really good input at these sort of moderate size moves. Another common issue that I see is sometimes people will do like a series of roll moves and then they'll do pitch separately. The only main issue with this is during this period when roll is not moving, it's still once in a while extracting data from this and it gets put into the average. So for example, if you look at our simulation here of that data, you can see that when when there's very little movement in the beginning, things look pretty noisy. Then things look pretty good around here. But then at, the, at some point later, you start getting the offset issue here. Especially here, you really have some really... There's no movement, but, but some of this data is going to go into the average. I mean, I've tried to make the algorithm so that it ignores as much of this as possible. But the, it's, it's kind of tricky because... Because in, if you're ignoring this data, you're also ignoring portions of this data that, that are part of the uh, onset of these bigger moves. The best way to, to get around this is to, do, is to do what I just showed you, where you actually try to move both pitch and roll together. Now, in a previous video, I realized that I had made the statement that, that this doesn't matter. And in some cases it doesn't, but it's going to really depend on it's going to really depend on how clean your gyro is. For example, some spots along here you can see that it's not bad, but then here it's not good at all, right? You know, it's it's a tricky call, but it, but certainly it's it's best to try to get both of those axes moving at the same time. This brings me to the last point that I want to make, which is how the algorithm deals with different size moves. So in this example, I've, I've created a log file where I started making these sort of smaller moves that are less than, say, 50 degrees per second, and these are slightly greater than 50 degrees per second. Then I get up here to about peak moves of about 150 degrees per second. What I can do then is I'll chop these into three different groups. So the first group will be segmented out for the smallest moves, then for the medium-sized moves, and then finally the larger moves. And then we can see that by and large, the response of these curves is pretty much the same. There is a difference in latency as you push the harder moves. This means that the system is relatively linear, at least up to a certain point, which is really critical for this method to be, to be useful because it wouldn't make sense if every time you changed the, the magnitude of the move, you get a different, different response curve. Okay, so hopefully this gives you some information as to why you're getting these noisy step response traces. And I want to stress here, this is, this is not about just making pretty graphs, so it's nice to have nice looking data. But the important point here is that what you want is reliable data. You want to be able to look at this and be confident that it's doing something that's meaningful. And so, when you see nice systematic changes, that's a result of your systematic changes in PID settings, then you can be more confident about what's actually happening. But if instead you have data that's kind of up and down with some noise on it, it's harder to be confident about whether or not those, those blips in the data are real or if they're just uh, an artifact of the noisy data. So I hope this 
provides you with some uh, useful information. There's don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the notifications button if you, if you want to see more content like this. Yeah.